Hello and welcome to episode 2. Our evolution to lithium batteries was a natural progression. In our first three years on Fantasia we had gone through two sets of lead acids. So I was keen to give lithiums a go, replacing our second set of 400 amp lead acids with 300 amp Winston LIFO 4s, which were half the weight of the lead acids. This smaller bank proved so much more powerful and our power needs were happily satisfied without variation for nine great years. You can see we had them originally as two separate banks following the fashion of the lead acid system, but learnt lithiums should be in one bank and eventually set them up together on the bridge deck. They were accepting much more power from our solar system and of course can be drained way down to 10% of their charge. It is a leap of faith to convert to lithium batteries as there is a lot of confusion over the dangers of lithiums. After quite some research, I now understood that it is actually the lithium manganese cobalt type which give lithium batteries this reputation. This type of chemistry is more compact and power dense, so used in high performance cars, mobile phones, laptops, e-scooters, etc. So in actual fact, our phones and laptops present more danger than this new and very stable lithium iron phosphate chemistry. Nine years on, in 2021, the Winstons were still working beautifully. By now though, our power demands had crept up and I was dreaming about converting to a solar electric motor. So I was keen to try out some of the new LIFEPO4 cells being mass produced in China for their booming electric vehicle market. These new variety feature a lightweight alloy cover with a thin plastic coating and are a further 38% lighter than the Winstons with their heavy plastic surround. And of course, everyone knows more weight takes more power to drive it, especially on a sailing boat. The lighter weight is also much easier to install. You can see here a photo of these two house banks together to appreciate how much smaller the new 400 amp bank is than the older 300 amp Winston bank. So at this point it all began to seem possible. So now every time I'd take my barrel to fill with diesel I'd be thinking I could be buying a life per cell for that price. So it, it wasn't long before I was unboxing 16 of my own 300 amp cells from Shenzhen China. Alibaba, that massive Chinese eBay can certainly be overwhelming. I was very cautious and asked a lot of questions, all of which were answered very promptly by my possible suppliers. Eventually, I gravitated towards Bennett at Shenzhen Starmax, who seemed very friendly and honest. The Alibaba system is very efficient, so having paid my money, it was a matter of waiting the 40 days it takes to come by a ship to Australia. I did have to pay some import duty, but the cost was still under $3,000 AUD for a 15 kilowatt bank with BMS and display screen and balancer. Plus Bennett had thrown in the nice epoxy separation plates. He even sent me videos showing testing of the voltage of each cell and testing of the welded bolts to six newton meters. So they arrived on time and the big exciting day of unboxing was upon me. While I was happy with the cells, I was in for a disappointment. In my unboxing, I was puzzled the daily BMS was only 250 amps, not 300, and there was no display screen or active balancer. I soon noticed the 250 amp BMS was for 12 volt, not 48 volts, and only for four cells. It being Chinese New Year, I thought things would be very slow. At first I thought the daily supplier must have sent me the wrong unit and the chap at daily answered me promptly and was very helpful. And by looking at the boxing photos, we discovered that Bennett's team had actually packaged the wrong unit. My friend Bennett was very apologetic and sad I had this bad experience. He tracked my BMS to his customer in Russia and I all but gave up hope of seeing it again. I just kept a positive attitude towards this situation and trusted it would work out, which, 
as you will see, it does. That's my place where I'm setting up the, the batteries. It's all a bit of a puzzle at the moment, how to fit the, just figuring out where to fit the batteries. And also there's the, down there is the, the 48 volt to 12 volt converter, which I'll be using to use some of the low excess load off the, off the engine battery. So yeah, that's the look on Fantasia, that anchor here lovely day the kites are out and people everywhere and bits of electrical stuff everywhere too yeah it's life on board there again oh how's that <laughs> and yeah down here i've been setting up the, the ends the battery ends to compress the batteries so i've, I've laminated them up and I've been puzzling away with the with the electric motor a little bit, putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. So while LifePo4 cells are very stable and safe, the key issue is ensuring safe wiring practices. The amount of power this type of battery can discharge is frightening. So when working with them, I approach them like I would a shark or a lion in the wild, with great wariness and respect. Spanners and tools should be carefully insulated, safety glasses worn and rubber gloves, while each move should be carefully planned out. All right, time for the unboxing of the, the BMS, which has finally arrived. It was unfortunately sent to Russia initially, so I thought it was, I'd never see it then, but my friend, Bennett from Alibaba was wonderful and had a, the Russians were very nice and got it back to the border of China and it made its way back to Shenzhen and here it is finally, they were really patient and I was very patient too so it takes two I suppose to, but here it is, and let's see. Hopefully it's all there. There it is. So looks to be all there. Right, here it is. Let's just check. It looks to be. It's a big, heavy thing. All the cables. Well, I'm still wondering if it's all there. 300 amp BMS, some extra attaches. Oh, what's this? Oh, here it is. There's the active balancer, which is a, it's a two amp active balancer. One amp, which I'm sure is, is going to be plenty. Um, and the screen, which I'm very keen for. Oh, it's quite, it's quite big, looks exciting, so it's all there, and he's sent me some extra connectors, which is nice, heavy duty, and some fastening screws, that must be for the whole unit, but there's the actual thing, which is quite hefty, and it looks like it's got the double cables, because you use two cables to take the, the high amperage flow. So it looks a lovely unit. Very substantial. It's finally here. All the way via Russia, via Shanghai, back to Shenzhen, and finally got here. So it's actually worked out well. My, I'm still sorting the battery there's the Bluetooth function. That'll be the on off. Yeah, so there it is. Instructions are here.
Awesome. All right, so today we finally got some time to work on installing the VMS and fuses and various pieces. Um, yeah, it's a draining outside today, so collecting some water and very keen to get on and do some installing. Let's see how we go. While both Daly and Golden Motors both say that the electronics in their BMS and controller do not necessitate a fuse, I still went with the recommended industry gold standard T-fuse. They are noticeably large and expensive, but are able to handle the massive power of lithiums and blow very quickly without welding together like lesser fuses can do. While checking out online forums, one does see a lot of criticism of the daily BMS. At the same time, research any product and you will find criticisms. Daily is a monster Chinese company producing a huge range of BMS for industry and DIY projects. So among their millions of BMS buyers, there will undoubtedly be some unsatisfied customers. In fact, the daily BMS has one of the highest build qualities of them all, as they are totally sealed and even waterproof. Unlike many of the highly touted BMS that come naked with all their electronics exposed. Now that daily have their active balancer modules, they are a match for any other supplier. They are also, they are also CAN bus capable and the customer support on Alibaba was faultless. So I feel very confident their product will serve me well. Well, this is the progress we've made after yesterday. We've got the, the BMS and the active balancer wires all, all set, all neatened up. Looking fairly good down the middle there. And, and I've got the BMS mounted with a bit of a gap there as they suggest that it shouldn't be, the BMS shouldn't be mounted hard up against the, the batteries, even though there's the, the wood there, I just thought get a bit more separation. So I've also got here the main T fuse and um, places to take off. There's the solar input there already wired up. So we've got the solar panel putting in power and the the daily screen works straight away which was great and it's showing here that we are 99% full and the maximum voltage is 3.556 and also what else have we got yeah so that seemed to work very nicely and the active balancer has been doing its thing. It's got it to be, the, the cells to be quite close now. We've got the maximum cell is 3.6 and the minimum cell is 3.55. So it's getting them quite close together up, up in their maximum voltage. So it, it will balance them to, to within 0 0.02 volts. So when they're up, at this high voltage then that is that's perfect so it's looking all oh, looking very good so I'm very pleased with how it all has come together um, one thing I have been doing is is going over some of my old wiring such as these two <laughs> my original efforts of soldering those with all the associated pitfalls of soldering and I'm now converted to the, the the crimping method and obviously there's great debate on crimping and soldering but I, I've come to agree that the crimping is faster and better in many ways and that's the crimping tool that I've used which is a, quite cheap on eBay I've also had to buy the bigger set to do these 95 millimeter crimps on the heavy wire that that's going to be running to the motor itself 
So that's all generally good for the overhauling my electric, my 14 year old electrical system. I'm also going to be putting these fuses on these instruments here, these analog instruments which are unfused and I've read that that is not such, that is a possibility of danger having something unfused like that that you perhaps don't think to put a fuse in in the beginning so I'll be doing that. Okay so an interesting app for those using buying LifePo 4 cells is the LifePo QR code checker so you can see it here so you can check your QR codes like this Boom. and straight away it tells me that these are EV power 280 amp cells that are built in the 12th of the 7th of 24 the cell um, other information there so you can check to know that you've, you've actually got what you ask for so that that gives quite a bit of security for the buyer these days so here is the 15 kilowatt bank finished another happy ending to the BMS story is that Bennett from Shenzhen Starmax let me keep the BMS he accidentally sent and it turned out to be perfect for my house bank previously I had used a very basic kind of BMS so this was a wonderful upgrade of safety for the Fantasia here is the system with all its covers on to ensure there are no accidental shorts possible. You can see I have clamped the cells as directed in the specifications. Compression of the cells reduces their expansion and contraction and considerably extends their life cycle. Accurately gauging 300 kilogram feet or the equivalent of three large people standing on the compression plate is complex. I figured decent torque on all 12 threaded rod bolts would put them fairly close. With this battery bank, I hope to get two hours of hard motoring at six knots, four hours of moderate motoring at five knots, seven hours of at four knots, and all day at three knots. Finally, and most importantly, 6,000 cycles will give us the equivalent of 16 and a half years of cycling the bank every day. So 20 years and more of use is quite feasible. As you can see here, and 1800, slightly over 1800 RPM. The motor temperature's at 65, the controller at 45. I got it on film, it's alright. 